Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. I'm going to call this Relationship Roundup, where I'm going to summarize relationships and how important they are to your relational database, and also start getting into queries and how relationships impact queries. First of all, to see the relationships between the different tables of your database, and I'm using the sample Northwind database that Microsoft produced back in the 90s to help us learn about access. We go to database tools, the relationships, and what you're looking for in a healthy relational database is something that looks like this, with one to many relationships between all the tables of your database. Now notice that every table doesn't have to be related to every other table. It's just that all the tables do have to be connected to another table in the overall schema, and often you want to use multiple tables in a question about the employees and what customers they're relating to. Well, the employees information is in the employees table and the customer information is in the customers table. So notice that employees and customers don't have a direct relationship, but they are connected through the orders table. So let's look at how this manifests in a query. I'm going to create in query design a new query and ask that question about employees and customers. I want to know what employees are working with which customers. Now notice when I just add the employees in the customers table, there is no direct relationship between these two field lists. And that's because there shouldn't be. One employee can relate to many customers and one customer can be serviced by many employees. So in order to resolve that in our relationship screen and in our query, we add the orders table. Now notice when I'm working in a query and the relationships have already been created in the relationships window, I automatically get these one-to-many relationship link lines. And because I see the one in infinity symbols, I know that referential integrity has been enforced. And that's a very good thing because that prevents the creation of orphan records as we saw in our previous screencast. But now I can ask, I'll say last name, and I'll find out the order IDs and the order dates of the different orders that that particular employee picked for various companies. I could even use my sort row here, sort by last name, and then let's sort by order date, and we'll look at this data in data sheet view. Now you can click the data sheet view button or the run button to see the data sheet. I prefer the data sheet view button because the run button does change data when you're working with one of these update queries. So I like to respect that run button and not use it unless I'm ready to run an action query. But either one or a select query, which merely selects data, will work just fine. I'm going to click the data sheet view button, and I'm seeing that Buchanan has serviced all of these order numbers on these order dates for these different companies. And I can scroll through these 830 records and see the orders for the other employees of the business. That when they're created in the relationships window, they automatically appear when you're creating a query. And that dramatically improves the performance of your database. If the relationships in the relationship screen are not created at the relationships window, then your tables are going to look like this and you'll have to manually link them at time when you create the query. And your query link lines will look like this because at query level, you cannot enforce referential integrity on that data at the query level. You can only apply that at the relationship screen. So this is what you don't want your query design view to look like because it's manually more tedious. You have to physically connect your field lists, your tables each time you create a query. It's enormously slower behind the scenes to process that query because the relationships are not already established in your database. And number three, you cannot enforce referential integrity at the query level. Orders table is the junction table between employees and customers because one employee can service many customers and one customer can order for many different employees. So employees and customers have a many-to-many -many relationship, and that's resolved with this junction table, the orders table, that has a one-to-many with both of the original two tables that have a many-to-many -many relationship. So I've got the last name of the employee, the company name, and let's also pull in the order date, and let's go with a sending order by last name, and then a sending order by company name, and then a sending order by order date, so that 
our records are ordered in a way that's easy to read. And let's look at that data. We see our first sort order, all the last names for Buchanan, are, all those records are listed together. The second sort order is the company name. So then within each last name, our records are sorted by company name. And when a company is ordered more than once, the records are further sorted by the order date. Now I want to go back to design view, and I'm going to take out the customer's table for a moment. And let's further examine this link line and look at the options that we can apply at query level. I might want to know if there's any employees who have never placed an order. To do that, I could double click the link line and say, give me all the records from the employees table and only those records from orders where the join fields are equal. What it should really say is include all records from employees, even if they have no records in the orders table. If I click OK here, I get a slightly different link line, which says I'm going to look at all employee records, even if they don't have a match in orders. Because again, by default, when you're selecting records out of a query, you'll only get the records where there's a match in all the field lists and all the tables that exist in Query Design View. This is called a left join in SQL because after all, a query is simply a series of SQL statements. And we see the left join there now on our link line. I'm gonna go back to Design View and look at this data sheet and see I still have 830 records. I'm gonna go into the employees table and I'm going to go ahead and enter my record, Frederickson, Lisa, and I can be a sales representative too. I'm not going to fill out the rest of this information right now. But there I am. I have no related orders at this point in time because I just put myself in as an employee. All these other employees do have orders attached to them. I'm going to close the employees table and run this query. And I'm noticing that I've got now 131 records. How do I find Fredrickson? We're sorted in last name, but how do I easily find Fredrickson without going through all of these 831 records? Back to design view, if I put is null in the order date, meaning give me all the employees, even if they don't have any orders. And by the way, let's pull the order date field in and make sure that that's null, nothing. When I hit my data sheet view button this time, I just find that one record, that 831st record, that does not have any records attached in the orders table. That's a good way to find parents records on the one side of a one-to-many relationship do not have a match in the child table, the table on the many side of the relationship. Let me wipe that criteria out, double-click my link line, and look at option three. Give me all records from orders, and only those records from employees where the joint fields are equal. And it really should say, give me all the orders, even if... They do not have a match in this employee ID field over here on the employees table. Now, if we've set up referential integrity from the beginning before our records were ever entered, number three and number one are going to be the same because I'm not going to have any orphan records in the orders table. But number three is definitely a good way to find your orphan records should you inherit a database where referential integrity was not set up on the relationships of the tables before data entry started. Number three is called a right join in SQL, where we're joining all of the child records, even if they don't have a parent, even if they don't have a match in the one table. Default, which is number one, is called an inner join. And that's the SQL default, which simply means give me all the records for these two fields from these two tables where there's a match of the linked joining field. So in summary, set up your relationships between your tables before you start doing your data entry, before you start doing your queries, forms, and reports. Because if you don't, I guarantee you'll have a lot of rework on your hands to fix your queries, forms, and reports to a correct relationship model between the tables. And if you inherit a database that does not have the relationship set up yet, but has a lot of data, queries, forms, and reports, you can fix it. It just requires a lot more work than if it had been set up correctly to begin with. But regardless of whether you're setting it up from scratch yourself or inheriting, 
an existing database, it is worth the effort to get your relationship screen set up appropriately with referential integrity enforced where possible. Thank you.